What are you doing this time, Cole? Well, Gary, even though I know you don't like kids, uh, I feel like this is uh, this is a prime opportunity for you. So let's go through this door. <laughs> <Can't> and... <really. laughs> Kid opportunity. Um, yeah, so uh, I've, I've come in and I've taken over this preschool for a day. Oh, fun. Um, and I've filled it with a bunch of kids whose birthday, are, or sorry, no, their, their parents' birthdays are today. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's an exhaustive search. Like, I know. Right? That's, a compli- that's some complicated uh, Boolean logic to make to find those people. Gary, big data can solve everything. Why aren't these kids coding? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, but what I've told them is that um, if they want their parents to love them still, they will take these alphabet blocks and build this. I'm going to open this, open this curtain here. Okay. They're going to build this magnificent castle for us. Oh, that's nice. I've always wanted a castle. I've been reading Game of Thrones. <laughs> I want to make duck, duck keep, <laughs> a yes. duck crag. Fortress. Yeah. Uh, a, a bunch a bunch of them um i'm not gonna say uh got exhausted let's let's say cranky okay and, uh, and i'm not gonna say um are suffering from dehydration let's just say they want some juice they're having some nap time in the nurse's office so they're, they're having some more slices they're gonna get back up on their feet they'll be they'll be fine but mm-hmm. um but no this is the randomization because what I want you to do, and I might join in on this as well, what these kids have built painstakingly, this this castle made of alphabet blocks, we're going to charge through it like the most boisterous of beach bullies as they watch. That's That sounds very fun. We should get someone to paint a picture on the other end. Let's make an <laughs> OK Go video out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. And then we're going to play blo- Boggle with the blocks to, 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 to randomize which game we're going to play next. I, I like that idea. Let's do it. OK. Let's hold hands while we do it. Let's go. Whee! Yay! Oh, they're blocks. Oh, so many corners. It was like walk, going into a soft wall. <laughs> oh, so let's um, figure out how I'm going to edit that sound and then look okay. down at the blocks. Oh, I'm seeing a pattern, Gary. Okay, yeah. We don't even have to play Boggle. It it's is already there. Mario's early years preschool fun. Fuck. We didn't, we didn't. We weren't supposed to do the entire preschool fun suite, right? I did Mario's early years fun with numbers. Oh, you did? Yeah, I thought that's what we were supposed to do. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is going to be a splitty piece. Oh, okay. I, I bet you we both have... Let's each fill up 20 minutes <laughs> on these things. <laughs> on these things. No, so there is one called Preschool Fun. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, I definitely have the wrong one. Huh. Well, oh, well. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Yeah, we're fucked. <laughs> How are we going to fit all this in? Um, <laughs> this is going to have to be another two-parter. I'm going to have yeah. to edit together a video for that. Who uh, who suggested this pile of shit? I mean, I guess I don't know the pile of shit that you did. I who suggested. <laughs> I guess I suggested no. my own pile of shit. <laughs> yeah, no, you just you just assumed your pile of shit. Yeah, you know what? I was you were born into the pile of shit. I just adopted I it. Um, no, no, this is this is archive lover. Okay, um, who is like one of, name? Yeah, no, no, he's a uh, uh, he or she. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure which. Um, is uh, a, a poster on the something awful forums and has been very active in submitting a bunch of stuff. Um, Great. so yeah, it says uh, these are not Mario's early years. He is clearly a grown ass man with a mustache. What gives? I was hoping that it would be Mario's early years because <laughs> well, as everyone be... knows, the best part of Yoshi's Island is baby Mario. I know, right? The favorite thing, especially that little design when he looks super creepy with that big nose, but no mustache. Oh, yeah. Tell mm. me what happens in Mario's preschool years. Well, first, we should probably introduce ourselves. What's your okay. name? Uh, Gary Butterfield. Okay. <laughs> cool. I just wanted to make sure. I need to make sure I have the right Gary. You haven't been face off. <laughs> exactly. No, I have last name blindness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. I've I've locked you in this room. Uh, my name's Cole Ross. Yep, and this is Adric Suffering, the show where we play bad games and games that honestly, like, uh, we we bear- play educational programs that uh, you suggest until we decide to do a moratorium and stop. <laughs> yes, so we may have to screen some of these out. It's funny that this serves as a as a means to put um colorful shapes in front of kids and have them hear other kids say the names of things. Like that's mm-hmm. that's cool. Once or twice. It's cool when it's a Burt's dinosaur. 
<laughs> yeah, Bridge Dinosaur was special. And like there are like, you know, Mario's missing, we mentioned before. But I think any other like like we can talk about Mario. We're gonna talk mm-hmm. about these counting game like this counting game <laughs> pretty briefly. And I bet you the preschool, even though preschool is very vague, like it'd be awesome if it was uh like a sim. Oh yeah. Or something like that, yeah. Hmm. Like a like a Kairosoft style <laughs> Mario in preschool game. But oh my gosh, if it's if if he's like headmaster Mario. That would be that's a oh, good idea. Pr- Principal Mario and he has to like settle oh disciplinary disputes and balance the budget. I like that idea a lot. Like oh, prison architect. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so huh. has there been a theme school? Um, oh, I I bet you there has. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm trying to think of it. No, um, you know what I, I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of there there literally was the uh the Kairosoft High School um, yeah, high school yeah. game, which was good. I yeah, all the all the Kairos off games are good, God. but they're all like the same. Yeah, but my favorite is still the game dev one, the first one. Yeah, because you have um, the most you have the most inroads to it. I've I've told you the my story about that, right? Mm, go ahead. I I, I, I think game. we're gonna be fine. And the um, <laughs> is uh because the game so as you eventually get and become a publishing juggernaut, you can do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Um, and that game for people who don't know, you choose a style of game and a subject matter, so like a genre and subject matter. So every time I play that game, I think I played through it from beginning to end like twice or mm-hmm. three times. Um, I get to the end, I'm huge, and after I've made all these like super fun like platformers and shooters and stuff, I just make game after game about the history of Othello, <laughs> and then watch as it gets like triple platinum. <laughs> like it's just like history of Othello, volume six. <laughs> The early years, <laughs> like, um, or reversey is what they what they call it on the thing. Oh, but yeah. like history, you know, history is the the type of game or the uh, the subject matter, and reversey is the <laughs> the thing. So just history of reversey, volume seven. That's pretty good. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Shades that, of gray. That, that, that's where it. That, that, that'd be a great name for a uh, for a history of Othello, wouldn't it? Yeah. Huh. I think so. Yeah. No. Like so. So that's that. That's a time when the when the when the artifice breaks down. I end up doing just like a whole bunch of. I will make things with the same subject subject matter, but in different genres, and mm-hmm. just try and um to try, try and think of titles that will yeah. that will match. That's half the fun. It reminds me. I, I talked about it on this very show, and someone actually reunited me with it. That game, Rockstar, mm-hmm. which is like a little text based game. That's a little simulation, oh, yeah. and half the fun is just coming up with song titles and albums and stuff. <laughs> Cole, yeah. can I ask you a question real quick? Yes, you can. I direct can. your attention to the chat window? Uh, uh, in Oh, wait. Oh, boy. Which computer am I looking at? Um, The one that Skype is on. Okay. So maybe not. Okay, yes, go you to, can. Go to the Wikipedia for Mario's early years, fun with numbers, and click on the PC cover of this and tell me what Mario's doing. <laughs> Okie doke. Um, and I'm going to sit here and hope my power doesn't go out because this is the first time I've heard rain. Oh, yeah. Oh boy, Mario! What's Mario doing there? M- M- Mario, <laughs> describe the scene for us, please. M- M- Mario um, is standing um, on the ground next to a child. Child's like a, a because I'm a child of McDonald's. I'm going to call it a play place, but it's like a jungle gym, right? The mm-hmm. uh, the, the the collection of posts with the colorful plastic he's uh, with the next netting. To jungle, jungle gym. Yes, he's standing. And they're he's, talking about Nom. Yep. No, they're. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's standing. He's standing inside of jungle gyms. Is that a porta pot inside? Nope, that's actually a lavish bathroom. Go back and listen to the spellcraft episode. Yes, I remember which one it was. Um, no, but he's he's there as though he's supervising. Um, there is inexpl- he supervising? I think he's more groping. Uh, he, his, well, he's his, got so he's reaching up in between a little kid's legs. Yeah, and has the most fucking like I'm sneaking a cookie out of the cookie jar oh. posture and face that I've ever goddamn scene oh. like it is it's, it's hard there, to look at this there, so so he's in reverse three quarter like he he doesn't want to take his obscured right eye off of this sweet sweet kid meat that is in yep. front of him but he's still looking at you and like he's he's winking yeah he's huh. he he looks very uh coquettish yeah there, there's no reason for him to be posed like that like he could be standing next to him with a thumbs up yeah. that's isn't that weird that's fucked why are there three slices of watermelon because th- that's what this game is about is about like counting fruit and shit okay <laughs> mm-hmm. huh yeah so that's yeah that this has taken a dark turn i didn't i wasn't trying to just make because that's the generic like that's the joke right is like 
an adult is in a kid's game, of course he is molesting those kids. Right. That's I just like this is just an image that was on like you could go into a Babbage's or whatever and buy this at a certain point. Yeah. And have this image of Mario being, you know, looking this coquettish, reaching up. But like somebody had had their fun with this. Right. Like and this was a photo shoot. Like those those watermelons actually exist. They're not photoshopped in. Hmm. The kid is holding a giant three. <laughs> there, there there's a man in a it's, it's it's marvelous costume work that he looks like a cell drawn animation on there but that is that is totally pra- practical effects yeah yeah uh-huh. he's he's actually there and they just like let him go like let's see where he's going with this <laughs> you, um, you know what the artist doesn't normify <laughs> yeah exactly it's not his place huh but th- this is the best this is the coolest thing about mario's early years fun with numbers it's not the yeah. best thing but the most interesting thing is this like <laughs> this picture of mario just like just on the lookout to see if anybody turns the corner and walks into the <laughs> walks into the room where this crime is happening oh hello there yeah i just like oh no i was just uh uh Chin itch on her knee, like that. That's what it looks like. I'm not trying to make that joke. That's right. what this it's image horrible. Looks like. Like, like, it's horrible. Like, huh? It's what it is. Yeah, that's that's there. Yeah, it's so, something else. It's something else, man. What's crazy about this? So we both played different games, but it really doesn't matter. No. Um, the one that I I was looking for a, for a crick ass surprise, right? Because even though we bolstered the ranks of the good side uh, with mm-hmm. uh, with our friend Zoo Dog, uh, you know you're you're always looking for more. You're always trying to fold and lift uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the, the the next uh, the you know the, the, like your, your next asset up to Mother Base. Um, and so the 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 lead developer of this, whose name is Peter Lipson. Mm-hmm. Um, he was director on a couple of other games, mostly mostly in the 90s, but um, he was staff on two amazing games, Rampart and Blasteroids. Oh, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Those are good. Yeah. Um, and then he went on to work at Toys for Bob, and that's where he is today. Toys for Bob. Um, the publisher who started out with Star, or Star Control 1 and 2. And, oh, yeah. and And then went on to become the richest company in the world with Skylanders. Oh, okay. Like, like so successful that it's really hard to begrudge them for the fact that they're selling toys. <laughs> yeah. And Skylanders, like, I mean, made the way for Amiibos, which everybody loves. Yeah. Do you, um, do you own an Amiibo? Do you have Amiibos? No, I want to get the, uh, I don't. Um, they're too expensive for what yeah. they are. Like, I, I think they're cool. I just think that they, sh- the price point is pretty high. Mm-hmm. Um, I will buy them though, because of their functionality in Mario Maker. Yeah. That's the thing. Like they, they, they yeah. fucking got me a year yeah, and a half in. They fucking got me. Yep. Like I want to be I able no to turn, interest, but I want to be able to play as Samus and Mario Maker. I wonder what if it actually changes your verb set. Like it that doesn't. Super Mario it's Games. literally just a way to to play with the same physics as but it that. Changes spray. the sound effects and stuff. Yes, according to the trailer, which is like that's that's good enough. <laughs> like no, they got me. They got me with that video showing them like, oh, here's here's Link and here's the Wii Fit Trainer for some reason. Yeah. Like yeah, because everyone's favorite Nintendo character. <laughs> Even though I have read a post of somebody who was saying they were in love with the Wii Fit Trainer. <laughs> so, oh gosh, was that from the with Reshiram guy? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Reshiram, Reshiram. <laughs> Um, definitely could be. I, I, I forgot about, I, or I forgot where I thought, saw it, but huh. it was somebody who wanted to fuck a video game character for no good reason. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. What happens in preschool Mario? <sighs> so it opens up with a title screen that shows you the most off model versions of the, uh, of the Mario characters you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, just like they're like an ultra thin, like let's say a skeletal and gaunt looking Yoshi, um, and a Peach who kind of looks like she kind of rode a motorcycle face first into a wall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you have a choice of a bunch of islands, and at this point, I'm thinking, okay, cool. I it's like gonna, islands. Yeah, you know, like I and and these are islands that have like big stuff on them. So here's a bunch of shapes, and I'm thinking this is going to be a bad but bonkers platformer that is mm-hmm. that is kind of themed around this and when i navigated to my first to my first island and i went inside of it i thought oh of course what do kids love more than controlling a cursor with a d-pad yeah yeah well it's made for the mouse <laughs> oh is it yeah like this is one of the few games that's made for the snes mouse wow so i knew these were pc games first yes. like this 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 was part of like nintendo's foray into and it's it's like i think the same initiative that kind of spawned the zelda cdi stuff 
Yeah, I think like, oh, let's let, let, let's put these things out. This is this is from the same thing that gave us like Mario sweater designer where you could design a sweater uh, in a Mario game and you could order it for uh, for twenty five dollars. I thought that was like a Japan. like a Famicom thing. That was a Famicom thing. Yeah, that's but back it was, in the day. This is it was that, very much that, in the same spirit. Yeah, that seems that seems more gentle than their CDI shit, <laughs> which was like a little bit like that seemed more. I think that's shady, but for, for, from an era, okay, yeah, like it, it, it's from an era when Nintendo decided to relinquish control over their IP to put it in the most well, they're, they're different terms eras. possible. Like one's, one's yeah. the the family, and it's like ten years later. Yeah, I guess is what. Ah. But they're they're both like just kind of oopsies mm-hmm. in the in that respect. And then they finally like, you know, Hyrule Hyrule Warriors is relatively fun. Mm-hmm. Like you know, they they finally figured out a way to do it and not have it be terrible. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, so what happens when you actually get to the island? What happens when <laughs> well, you get to the fire, fire, fireworks factory, Cole? <laughs> to the fireworks factory. Well, Gary, this literally is for preschoolers because they're trying to teach you such uh, such things as what are different body parts called, um, or uh, teaching you to count, which I assume is the ex- like the complete extent of what your game was, right? It, it's very count, like uh, the the different. So, <laughs> kind of funny. You go to these different islands in the counting one. Mm-hmm. And the the uh, the islands are number world, counting world. <coughs> guess guess what you do in that that you don't do in number world. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, okay. Um, uh, comparing world. <laughs> um, I love comparing world. Oh my god! Like, I like that phrase a lot too. Um, and how many world? <laughs> how is that <laughs> Which you don't than count? counting world? <laughs> I know. Super good. Um, so, so counting world in my, so this is like some dark tower, like just uh, alternate dimension stuff. <laughs> my version of counting, counting Island or, or whatever is that you just, you're in a classroom and there are a whole bunch of different, like little, like, like over here, there are six blocks on a, on a shelf. And here are three birds on a windowsill and you mouse over top of these and the, the, the cursor goes active. And then you just hear a little kid voice sample go one. Two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, seven balloons. All counting is in real time. Yes. Like, which is really, really a bummer. That, and, that's true in this as well. And they're not even doing like the Sesame Street, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like, yep. <laughs> no, it's it's literally just sampled in the most crude way possible. The uh, the big problem with with this one mm-hmm. um is or not the big big problem? I guess the cool thing about this one, the opposite of a big problem, is that when you are when you have to pick out the right number, like you know, it tells you, uh, uh, you know, three plus four, or what number comes after six. The thing that gives you your quest giver, oh, is Luigi. Yep, you have to wake him up. You have to poke him to wake him up and have him give you a mission. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're just you're, you're just kind of like going through and uh, and bonking on stuff. Like when, yeah, I was doing that. And I was like, "Is this literally just like it's Mario next to numbers, like, <laughs> and there's there's nothing you do?" Um, but no, not the case. Oh so. my gosh, what happens when you get an answer right? Um, it counts all the way up, um, okay. and then eventually the uh, uh, so it depended on the game for me, right? So because like one of them was uh, like an egg that was hatching, <laughs> um, and then the egg hatched, I'm, and I'm Luigi, <laughs> Luigi put it in a pipe. <laughs> like so mine varied for mine okay it wasn't the same every time so in mine whether or not it was opposite world where you had to distinguish between what is hot and what is cold or um listening world where you had to match animals with the sounds they make okay. um, whenever you answered right some just drastically off model uh mario character would like pop up and in like a goomba voice go i like your choice oh <laughs> i don't think i had that <laughs> yeah sadly enough good job that's pretty special. I, I'm into it. Yeah. Oh, also, in Body World, you can click on the sun, and his eyebrows will waggle in the most suggestive manner possible. Mm. To the point where I definitely made a gif of that. And if when, <laughs> when, when, when I when I get sick of my of my lemon grab avatar on something awful, I am going to change it to that. That's going to be your guy. Yeah, it's going to be sexy sun. The sexy sexy sun. <laughs> um. So that's educational games. <laughs> for you two things real quick we were talking about amiibos one i probably will buy the shovel knight amiibo i love okay. shovel knight two they actually they put out a uh, triple king plush that talks oh shit and it's 28 dollars, but it looks amazing i'm probably gonna get that <laughs> so I want, I want the triple king 
But three, or here, let me... Uh, you only signed me up for two. Yeah, oh, yeah. Three, though. Uh, la, <laughs> is la, that, la, 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 uh, <laughs> Is, uh, guess what I did over this, uh, this weekend, what I did on Labor Day? Uh, what did you do, Gary? <laughs> I went to the Oregon State Fair. Oh, for yeah. my birthday. Oh. Yeah, okay, let's camp here. <laughs> so, so, uh, how long has it been since you've been to a county or state fair? Mm, when I was like in early college, I went home or it was like, it was right before I left for school. So I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. No, yeah, no, it was college because I went there for a, uh, for a demolition derby. Ooh, that's pretty fun. Yeah. It was like, I was, it was, I was just old enough for it to be ironic, but just young enough to still be like, I'm going to eat some shitty food. It was, so carnival food, I think is the, the, the reason why it's, fairs are good. It's the draw. Yeah. Like it's not good. Like you don't want to eat carnival food more than three or four times a year. Mm-hmm. But you want to get those three or four times a year in. Okay, I want to make sure. So while we're on the top of of car- carnival food, because I think there's going to be a lot more that uh, that comes down the way here. Mm-hmm. Um, did fair fries up in your region just at some point turn from the best thing to utter shit? Um, I haven't had them for a long time since I I can't eat yes. fries with impunity. Um, but but, but that... even even before that. Um, I don't because, remember. I, I, because I remember fair fries being like these thick cut things that still had like a little bit of the skin on it. And mm. they, they they served them in a cup and you could put some vinegar on there and some like incredibly runny ketchup. And they were thick, kind of crispy, but still kind of mushy fries. And eventually like they're the supplier changed or they stopped cutting them inside the uh, inside the trailer. I'm getting incredibly romantic about these fries, Gary. <laughs> um Eventually, they stopped doing that, and they just had, like, these shoestring fries out of a fucking bag. Well, and they're now, bad. Yeah. Now they're, they're they, I know that one place was serving them in bricks. It was like, mm-hmm. you get a, you get a fry brick. A fry brick? Is it still made out of potato, or is it like a fry bread, like, here's, here's just like a bunch of dough kind of thing, like an elephant ear, but savory instead of sweet? No, they were french fries. Okay. And they were served. They served them in brick form. It was it was an undifferentiated French fry mass. Like I felt like it was like if you took because French fries are ostensibly shaped like little rectangle, like little boxes, right? Yeah. Like the idea being that you could lay a bunch, like you could theoretically like stack a bunch of fries into a brick. So this I is like a Lincoln idea. log creation. I'm sure that's not actually how they made it, but that's what I imagined. Right. And that's what it looked like from the outside. Like I didn't get a fry brick. Right. But, but but you had to watch a fry brick, and that was that that was enough. I did. I watched a fry brick. Oh, this is a new. Uh, I had one of these at uh, at the pride parade here recently because uh, it was after a long night of drinking, and I just needed a bunch of grease to soak it up. But um, spiral cut fries, where they oh, take yeah. like a Dremel and they cut it up and like the and then just like served in a big uh, in a big basket with like some cheese. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in brick form. <laughs> um, so that's one thing. When when I was for me, when it comes to carnival food. What I what I want are like fried, deep fried like pickles, mm-hmm. and deep fried uh, like cheese, and things like that. Yeah. So I appreciated that. Mm-hmm. One thing, and again, this is spoiling a, a you know not enough people who listen to teenage dirtbags in general, but this thing I mentioned on teenage dirtbags as well. But I'm going to mention it here because more people listen to the show and it's very special. <laughs> um, at the fair, there was a corn dog stand. Okay. And outside the corn dog stand, hanging like they had committed crimes, were five <laughs> examples of the kind of corn dogs they made. Okay, and they weren't these like were, you know you, these you, were like a, like a cross between like Vlad the Impaler examples to other corn dogs that might encroach on their land, and also like the front of a, like a, like a butcher shop you would see in a Chinatown. Exactly, like it, it's exactly that, and they weren't like fake ones. Like sometimes you go to a place and they'll have like, here's like a fake chicken or something like that. Yeah, these were clearly like just corn dogs they had made that day, and hung up on the side of their booth on strings rather than served to people. <laughs> and they serve five corn dogs in ascending order. These are their names, and I have a picture of this. It sounds like I'm making it up, but these are these five corn dogs' names. I've seen the picture, but I want you okay. to say the names. I'll, I'll say I'll say it for other people. Shorty, <laughs> Duke. Bacon Duke, make my day, make my bacon, Dominator. <laughs> and some of these appear to be at least like eighteen inches long. The Dominator is a serious boy. <laughs> like that is a that's a serious yeah corn that's dog. That, that that's that's like like three brats on a dowel. Like yeah, I, I and I'm not I'm not turning my don't 
Why no, do you think I'm come... turning my nose up at corn dog? I love a corn dog. No, I, I, you know what, Gary? Sometimes if I'm feeling saucy when I'm at the when I'm at the uh, at the grocery store, I will buy one of those two pack like frozen corn dog things, and I'll, I will make one and eat it, and then I'll make the other one about a week later and eat it, and I will feel terrible. I assume that you ate them. Like you didn't, that was not part of the story. That was. <laughs> No, I, yeah, I, I make it and eat it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. I ate it. Like, I didn't just, like, torture <laughs> myself. Like, it's not something. Your butt. Like, no. I, I, <laughs> no, I knew I... you ate the corn dogs. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I wasn't torturing myself with them. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Um, but, yeah, it was it was really amazing. I didn't get one of those. So I got to see a lot of fair food. If you just said, I went to the I went to the fair and I saw Shorty, the the, the Dominator, and what, what, like, what were the other ones? Duke. Duke. Bacon Duke. Make do. my day and make my day. I would assume you were describing the craziest boy band ever. <laughs> yeah, that's, like I like Duke Bacon, Duke Make My Day, Dominator Shorty. Yeah, yeah, yeah that sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I'm I'm into it. Mm. Uh, those are the kind of uh, Dukes and and corn dogs I like. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so, so what like was what was was this just a like let's go and walk around kind of kind of visit to the fair. Or were you yeah. there on a mission? No, I mean, I, I like shit like that. Like, I like, you know, I've said it before. Like, I'll, I'll fucking go to Tulip Fest. I'll do anything. Yeah. I, I like I like doing stuff. So, and it was uh, the day before my birthday. So, mm-hmm. uh, my my girlfriend took me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're just, like, doing... Uh, we went on a, a, the worst haunted house I've ever been to. Haunted, uh, or haunted, like, house ride. Mm-hmm. Thing that was uh, called Ghost Pirates. And, like, you, You've already of, lost me. Yeah, well, the, like I, I can get down with a ghost pirate, and they were really skeleton pirates. They weren't really oh, ghosts. Okay, okay. Well, no, the, now, now you got me back. Continue. They may or may not have been tangible, <laughs> but like in in the carnival art version. But the carnival art was weird. One of them was clearly an infant. Like it was an infant <laughs> skeleton that somebody had used as a model. <laughs> um, and then, but when I went in, like there's that Simpsons thing where like they go through the haunted house and the spring just pops out at them. <laughs> and there's the, yeah, the ravages of old age. <laughs> um, there were so many, th- there was like three things inside the haunted house and two slots where you could have put things that were empty. <laughs> and the, the carny didn't talk. He just motioned with his ticket scanner. <laughs> it was so weird. Like I, I half think that I came out and I'm actually in a subtly different world and I don't know it. Like <laughs> it was so, it's like so the end weird. Of mirrors. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah huh it was <laughs> no, so bad no no, no like, like now, now you're at, like the difference is that all ghost pirates are skeleton pirates yeah yeah it, it just switched it's like when you beat super mario world yep and like now everything's just a little bit different um <laughs> yeah it, it was it was so super bad yeah it was the worst did uh have i ever told you that i that that, that i had certain certain points in my life flirted with a carny lifestyle no <laughs> Okay, so that's probably overselling it. My my grandparents, because of some kind of weird affiliation, uh, mm-hmm. they ended up providing uh, catering services and also um, and and also like concession help at uh, at, at any number of fairs uh, that ran between the Norwalk area of Ohio and the Delaware area of Ohio, up to and including the Little Brown Jug. And I was enlisted to be a money runner and also to uh, work in the pizza stand and such. And that I think is... you maybe have told me that before. Yes. I just didn't. I was thinking of you like can thinking about becoming a carny <laughs> no, just, uh, you know you just you don't have a lot of options sometimes when you come up in uh old mansfield it's Ohio. the carny or the army <laughs> you're living down in allentown <laughs> like <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry you got me with that one <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i don't i don't uh I've never considered being a carny, but I can I can see the appeal other than the fact that you have to hang out with carnies i know right like you don't want to be a self-hating carny <laughs> no no but i would be <laughs> like, I, I would hate carnies but i would feel weird just I'm, like what do they do at night like or like on nights when they're traveling like you get somewhere i imagine it being like carnival like you know you're just like hanging around it's unsavory there's murders yeah i'm i'm picturing i'm picturing them you know like when they when they stop for the night if they don't drive in shifts you know because they have to make it down to tulsa um yeah. I, I picture i picture them stopping and holding like the real carnival like out in some kind of like oh shit <laughs> it's you just like they they they, they kind of they kind of know a where all of the like the the the, the secret pot farms are because mm-hmm. they got to go and stock up but when they get there and the feds have like burned them down they call that uh they call that carny halloween 
Ooh, and, yeah. and and then they open up the front and they actually like 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 play the real versions of their games where like it's not it's it's not water that they're shooting into the clown's mouth it's it's whiskey and it's not so much a clown as it is another carny that would be very fun to fill one of those things with whiskey i, I would like to see like a lou like a louis like a louis thoreau documentary of of carnival of, of carney halloween in me a, too in, or in just a... carny life like honestly <laughs> well yeah like even a non-joke version of it i'd be pretty into mm-hmm. um i i dominated some kids on that shoot the clown mouth <laughs> yeah. and by dominate the kids you mean you had slightly higher water pressure yeah like i i i well yes that's exactly <laughs> what happened but we won a gigantic unicorn Ooh. um which was fun because it was I've... near the it was the last day of the carnival mm. so they, oh they so yeah the, they're, like, they're trying to offload yeah yeah because it's more Jum- expensive jumbo to... prizes were going everywhere <laughs> Yeah, I just you you always get lured in with the jumbo prizes, and then you walk away with a South Park Coke mirror. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They they wouldn't let me have a, a smaller prize. No, because they were trying to get rid of the hard to move ones. Like I asked for a smaller prize that was cuter than the stupid unicorn. No, and they wouldn't give it to me. Fucking unicorns. So, pretty weird. Mm. Um, did uh did, did did your fair have any like strong four H components to it? Oh. Yes, very much so. Like okay. we we toured the the 4H like pens. Mm-hmm. We looked at some some animals. They always uh, seem a little bit unhappy. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why that is. Well, the, uh, the people too. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, but like the animals, <laughs> it's like it is depressing. Like it is, it's pretty sad. Mm-hmm. These uh, you know, because it's like bunnies don't want to be in the I, cage. Like, I don't think bunnies want to be that big. No, bunnies don't want no part of this. I'm like. <laughs> It is all the animal judging thing. I've always thought that. Like when I went to that cat show, mm-hmm. it's just weird that it's like someone like this is a good goat. <laughs> this is a bad goat. You know, like, what are you, like they're just goats. Like it's just weird to me that like this is a good bunny rabbit. This bunny <laughs> rabbit is bad. Like, how can you make Boo. that kind of decision? <laughs> like it's just it's you know it's very strange. But speaking of uh, amiibos, we went into like the 4H like craft hall. Okay, and somebody's craft they did. Uh, was an amazing set of Shovel Knight uh, Perlers. Oh, really? And it was perfect, and they did all the bosses. That's and fantastic. And that was what they were displaying in the 4-H thing did, at the Oregon State Fair. Did you get a picture of that? I, I didn't, know Because oh. I was just like, oh, I could, you know, I could. The weirdness was that it was at the fair, not that okay. <laughs> it was a thing at all. Like, it was good, but, like, <laughs> well, we'll no, see three or four I, of them I, at PRGE. I, I suppose so, but I would still like to see a picture of that because that sounds fun. It was cool. Like I was just, I was really surprised to see it because like it was a lot of like, here's a painting of a butterfly and then <laughs> tons of uh, Captain America's huh. like really bad high school drawings of Captain America. But then bam, like really good Perler art. Like I think it's going to go places. Yeah. I was, I was pretty proud of him. <laughs> yeah. I should have actually put, cause sometimes like uh, our friend bought a painting from one of these things once uh-huh. I like, just put a note and it was just like, I would like to buy this and bought a piece of art from this thing. Cause it was like oh. this weird outsider art. Yeah. And I wonder if I could have been like, I'll give you 50 bucks for this insane set of perlers and could have got it yeah i should have done that i kicked myself yeah well that like it, i mean it, it was a kid right yeah exactly okay. 50 bucks to a kid i know and like i think about slim like, gems you could buy for this hillbilly <laughs> well, no, well no but like i'm immediately thinking you hillbilly <laughs> most a lot of my friends were 4 age kids in, in high school but, but um but no um but no just uh, thinking like man like a full set of like shovel knight perler stuff at prg would go for like four hundred dollars yeah exactly like the people who knew the value so i should have taken advantage of this kid yeah sure. you you and, you, re- you fucked up is what i'm saying i, I did that's that's 100 percent you huh true um, there was a hypnotist, ooh, which we didn't watch because it was like waja as hell. Like, oh, it was impossible to watch. He had a bunch of like 4-H kids, and kept hypnotizing them to be thinking they were in different kinds of bands, and they just kept like picking up uh, violins and mock violining to music for like full length musical numbers. Like, Ugh. he was definitely like, "Can you fill ninety minutes, Amazing <laughs> Carl?" Like, it was really like stretched pretty thin. You say Amazing Carl. That wasn't his name. That was just okay. <laughs> so we need to get some mileage off of Amazing Carl. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Was there any? Was there a tractor pull element to this? There was, but we missed it. This was okay. the last day of the fair, so there was no equine events. Mm. Like we missed that, yeah. and uh, we missed the the track, like the machine events. Have you been to a demolition derby ever? I may have. I maybe. I remember this recently. I can't remember if I talked about it on air though. Uh huh. My dad used to do demolition derbies. No, I've never heard this story. 
it is, I never think about it because I try not to think about my dad because it makes me sad. But right. when I was growing up, uh, before my parents got divorced, they got divorced when I was seven. So I've been five or six. We lived in Aurora, Illinois, the town I was born in. My dad had an old beater brown car and I went and watched him do demolition derbies in it. Huh. Like, and it was just like, there's not too, I know that the car like eventually just got smashed where he couldn't drive anymore and stopped doing that, it. That's the surprising thing to me. Not that somebody would have, would, would have you know, endeavored to do this because I know demolition derbies exist, but that a car would survive it and go do a second demolition derby. Yeah. Huh. I don't like, I wish like, there are a few things like, you know, like there, <laughs> if, if the, uh, the Everclear song father of mine has, <laughs> that can serve as a, as a list of the questions I want to ask my dad. If I ever see my dad, I'm just going to put on that tape and stare at him for three and a half minutes. But after it ends, after that, I'd be like, answer all those things. Also like you did demolition derby, right? Tell me about that. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, is there a form you have to fill out or is it like totally like, you know, hush hush. And they're like, you have to go to the Carney hospital. Yeah. Like what, what, uh, you know, what, why <laughs> you, you have to like, be stitched what? up with the ribbon strings from helium balloons. Yeah. <laughs> huh. It is, uh, yeah, but the, yeah, so I've seen demo. I've only seen one though when I was like six. Okay. So I haven't seen a demolition derby as an adult. Was it impressive to you when you were six? Surprisingly, no. I remember it being scary because okay. I thought my dad was going to die in a car wreck because <laughs> he was participating in the demolition derby. Okay. Did it register in your mind that a demolition derby is, in fact, not impressive because no car moves more than three feet before he hits another car? And, in fact, it appears to be a uh, some kind of very rural and very violent mass parallel parking accident. <laughs> no, it did not. Okay, but I, I, because, that sounds accurate. Because because that's that's what it is. I went there, you know. I'm just kind of like in full irony mode. My brother got like tickets to it. Like, yeah, Chris, let's go. <laughs> let's let's go look at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's do it. You know, is, I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna turn my nose up at this. Um, yeah. and uh, I was like, like, and for some reason in my head, either because of Happy Days, you know, where the Malachi brothers are going to do the Malachi Crunch, and mm -hmm. uh, and Pinky Tuscadero's in real trouble, and the Fonzie has to rescue her, or because of of any number of PS1 car combat themed racing games, I pictured that it was going to be like people moving at speed. Yeah. Right. But that's not the case. No, it's, it's literally just an extended parallel parking accident. And I was very underwhelmed and the crowd was not, the crowd was markedly whelmed. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think cocaine might've been involved from those South Park cocaine mirrors. It's also probably just fun to see some noise and smash. Yeah, I mean, there was like lots of lights and the and the announcers were kind of going for it. Like the announcer was goading like, oh, that was a hit. And there would be three seconds as it registered for people. And then they would like cheer. I think everybody wants to have a good time and I'm not going to begrudge them that. Yeah, you wouldn't even need like Coke, like just being drunk. I would be pretty. Yeah. I could see whooping it up at. Yeah. Like drunk at a demolition derby. Well, because you're because you're at a demolition derby. Or just like, weeping in the corner because of, <laughs> because you're at a demolition so, derby. Yeah, because it reminds me of oh, yeah, because, things. So, <laughs> one or the have, other. You have, you have to make sure like the repeat button's broken, so you have to make sure it doesn't go to I would buy you a new life. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I will not this is this is a non binding Everglear song. <laughs> I will not buy you a new life. But if you hold out, it's eventually going to get to uh, Wonderful, which is basically the same song as Father of Mine. Yeah. You had a lot of problems that Alex Alexis. <laughs> what a piece of shit he is. The least of which is his incongruously Voice? colored. Well, yeah. His, like uh, his was, shitty song I, I was thinking his incongruously colored soul patch, but. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oof. Oof. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else was, was fun at the fair <laughs> that I did. Um, there's like a dinosaur thing, like this touring like here's some shitty animatronics of dinosaurs. Uh huh. That like I'm I'm gonna do that. Like I'm never gonna not do that. And the uh, it was funny though because the whole thing was like seeing dinosaurs, and then in like a smaller font, and then a bigger font in their natural environment. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like the worst like plastic pens. Nice. And and grass on the ground and stuff. It was pretty rough. I, like so. Uh, okay. And again, it's been let, let let's say let's say it's been ten years. I'm gonna what is that? I'm gonna be twenty eight. Yeah. So it's been ten years since I've been to since I've been to this. Are carnivals still unstuck in time? Like, are there like Angry Birds ride like uh, uh, games and stuff like there, or is it just straight up? This is the late seventies, early eighties still. Um, a little bit of both. Hmm. 
Like, I mean, there, there's some like, like just like dumb, stupid, angry birds things, but there are some weird touches, touches of modern, mar, mod, modernity. modernity. Yeah. Modernity. Thank you. Like it's, it is in Oregon. So like there were food carts mm. there. Like, like, you know, there were like fancy food. Yeah. It was like there at certain places. Like if you got away from the, the carny food, artisanal funnel cakes. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Like a that, funnel cake is some bullshit. I that tastes good though. I mean, yeah, they're, 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 they're fat and sugar. I'm more of a fan of the elephant ear because it's fat and sugar and cinnamon. Yeah. Yeah. It's a textural thing. Whether you want more surface area mm, yeah, or you want more internal. Mm, yeah. Thing. I think that, I think that, uh, both of them get soggy, but an elephant ear gets soggy at, le- at a, at a, at a, uh, less pronounced rate. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I would do terrible things to an elephant ear right now. Like, <laughs> A I'm, suit listeners will recognize three weeks ago or like two weeks ago we were recording and I was saying how hungry I was and it just increased. Yeah. Like I should have eaten before we started recording, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I've kept you from eating. No, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Like, uh, we, we, we learned a lot. I've, I've been saving people a little peek behind the kimono is that I've been saving this carnival stuff for this educational game <laughs> because I knew that this educational game was not going to have a whole lot going on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so. and a carnival is something you're always going to, going to get mileage from the first time you bring it up. I, I still have like a whole other episode of Abject Suffering about fair stuff I can do. Ooh. Like, have you ever seen d- Diving Dogs? No, I haven't. It's like dogs, just like it's a competition where dogs run and jump into a pool. <laughs> and that's it. Like, it, I kept expecting and they each have their own song that pops up, like, bow with a bow will come up, yet. and then this <laughs> dog runs and jumps in a pool, and all these yokels scream. God, I like, feel like that was that, like, that, that was the instigating plot element of, like, a South Park episode, or, uh, like, hmm. it was like a King of the Hill episode, something like that. Something had diving dogs. It could have been like, it sounds like a King of the Hill to me. Yeah. Um, it's just very funny. And they throw like a toy, but the dog's point is not to get the toy. The dog's point is to see how far it can jump, but it didn't seem like mm-hmm. anyone was measuring it. Right. It just seems like people and like, in a way you strip away those elements and it actually makes it better. Like mm-hmm. here's a whole crowd of people gathered to watch dogs <laughs> have good times to music. Yep. <laughs> and like in a way that's really beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like there's there's something there's something awesome about like watching you know because it's it's sad if it's a wild animal right that is oh, like yeah. you know going to a zoo and you know it's cool to see a lion but it's not that great when you think about everything that surrounds that lion being there but a dog just wants to like be clapped at and have a bunch of attention and affection and to get wet and hear loud noises right yeah. so you're watching a dog be a dog but dog but dog dig it dig it dig it dig it dig it best time yes like that dog was so happy so it's one of those things where if you strip away the artifice it's actually better yeah huh yeah it was actually kind of beautiful <laughs> um can, oh can yeah. i can i mention fair jealousy fair jealousy Ooh, yes no my parents uh they went uh they, they, they went to the fair up at uh, mansfield it was like the richland county fair i forget what the like the headliner was it was like some kind of cover band uh that they were going to see but the headliner was cheap trick Ooh. It was like, God damn it, I want to go see Cheap Trick. You're going to go see what? Cheap Trick? And they complained about how loud it was. That sucks. Yeah. Well, I'm from Rockford, Illinois, where my my where my where first wife was from. And, <laughs> yeah, and was 45 minutes away from my hometown. So Cheap Trick played like all the time like mm-hmm. at our stuff like that. Nice. Cheap Trick's like most recent album as of a couple of years ago was named Rockford. Like, <laughs> they love Rockford. So huh. Cheap Trick is in my DNA. Um, <laughs> and you can do way worse because Cheap Trick is actually wonderful yeah like that I, I really wanted to go see cheap trick i'm not they're joking great. yeah they're great huh super great yeah um yeah so uh <laughs> what have we learned here today <laughs> i think that we've learned that we keep some like to an extent we keep stuff banked up for things like this mm-hmm. yep and uh and i learned to count yeah which is so, good yeah finally yeah we, we we cured your dyscalculia yep thanks mario Thanks, Mario. And thanks. Uh, who suggested this? I like your choice. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was so weird. That was Archive Lover, who uh, ah, who, yes. who recommended this uh, under the air of suspicion around Mario's true age. And we found something much more sinister. Yeah, that picture is worth checking out. So find that. Ooh, that, that picture is worth a thousand affidavits. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um you can support us on Patreon if you want to have a chance of dictating a uh, episode or if you want to get a free episode per month, mm-hmm. um, extra episode. Yeah. Or uh, join Patreon. our Slack channel. There's like cool oh, stuff yeah. happening there. Yeah. 
So, uh, you know, DuckFeed or uh, patreon.com forward slash DuckFeed TV. Mm-hmm. And we really appreciate it. Otherwise, there's the iTunes. There's uh, there's Facebook. Uh, mm, I don't want to promote the live stuff here because it may have already happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, next time we're going to be doing Total Recall for the NES. Oh, cool. Yeah. I got it. I have a lot of things to say about that movie, at least. Mm, me too. That's a good movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And uh, yeah, good night. Sing Zoodog. Zoodog.